This animation contains the neuromuscular junction. The most basic level of muscle contraction starts with the neuromuscular junction. An action potential, the yellow disc, travels down the axon terminal in red and arrives at the presynaptic terminal, causing voltage-gated calcium ion channels, which are illustrated in purple and orange, to open, thus increasing the calcium ion permeability of the presynaptic terminal cell membrane. Calcium ions, the purple balls, enter the presynaptic terminal and bind to acetylcholine vesicles, which are the black discs, and cause vesicles to release the neurotransmitter, which is acetylcholine, the yellow balls, from the synaptic vesicles into the presynaptic cleft. Acetylcholine binds to the acetylcholine receptors on the motor end plate, causing the sodium channels, which are shown in green, to open in the motor end plate. This causes depolarization, which is an influx of sodium in blue and potassium in brown, which propagates the action potential down the muscle cell membrane. Once the postsynaptic terminal depolarizes, caused by the influx of sodium, an action potential is propagated down the sarcolemma. Acetylcholine esterase, which is shown in turquoise, binds to the acetylcholine and the acetylcholine receptors, breaking it down into acetic acid and choline, which is then reabsorbed back into the presynaptic terminal. The action potential travels down the sarcolemma and travels into the T tubules, which causes calcium ions to be released from the terminal cisternae, which causes calcequestrin, and calcequestrin stores large quantities of calcium ions. Now calcium ions go down to thick and thin myofibrils, which are shown in the red rods, and they bind to troponin, the blue balls, on the thin myofibril, which removes the tropomyosin, the red rods, away from the myosin binding site, the black dots on the actin, which are the yellow balls. The heads of the thick myofibrils, the orange balls, have ATP that has hydrolyzed into ADP with a phosphate. The action energizes the myosin head. This allows heads of the thick myofibrils to attach and form cross bridges with the actin. When that phosphate breaks away from the ADP, the energy released springs the myosin head to attach to the actin and then contract. This is all one motion. At that point, more ATP binds to the myosin head, causing it to release from the actin and then the cycle repeats. ATP during a muscle contraction is provided by myochondria and the sarcoplasm. This is a diagram of the sarcomere. The sarcomere contains two Z discs which attach the thin filaments an M line which attaches the thick filaments, an H zone which contains solely the thick filaments, an I band which contains solely the thin filaments, 
and the A band is where the thin and thick filaments will combine and during a contraction the Z discs will be drawn together. This is a diagram of the sarcomere during complete contraction. Notice the Z discs are completely drawn towards the end of the I band and contained solely within the A band. This video is a demonstration of a muscle contraction in which myofibrils um, bundled together make a myofiber which bundled together makes a fascicle. This is a whole muscle contraction viewed like this.